So here we have <clears throat> like a previous program, the red light comes on whenever this counter sees five uh, or more parts. So if we reset the counter, then the red light will go off, and then after five parts go in, the red light comes on. Now one thing we kind of want to do is if this light is to signal to an operator that they need to do something, sometimes people want to have a flashing red light instead, or a flashing horn, or a pulsing horn, or some kind of a pulsed output. And, and we can do that a couple of different ways. Um, but one way that we have to do it is with a timer, <coughs> is with the timer and a uh, comparator block. So I'll show you how we do, uh, how we do that uh, here. So first thing we want to find is we want to find our, our timer. Okay, and we're going to use a timer off delay, okay, which is going to come true right away. And then stay true for a while, and then we will call it flashing light. Okay, <clears throat> and so we're going to give this timer a value of two seconds. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to cut that in half with our um, comparator, and so it's going to be on for a second and then off for a second, on for a second and then off for a second. So when do we want this? Uh, light to start flashing. Well, when our, our counter has uh, gone over five parts. So we have part counter Q U for over above five parts. Um, and then the other thing is we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure this timer just keeps resetting okay, indefinitely. And so a quick easy way to do that. Let's use our reverse function to be able to say, as soon as that flashing light is done, <clears throat> once it's done, this goes false, but true, and then that resets the that resets our timer. Okay, and we have a repetitive timer that just keeps timing every two seconds. It's going to reset. Okay, <clears throat> and then what we want to do is we want to say for one second the light will be on. While the timer's timing, and then one second it'll be off. That way it'll flash from uh, from on to off. And so we use this comparator. It can be either greater than or less than. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And let's think about what we're going to do. We're going to compare the flashing light last time and compare that to some value. And so I would like to just cut it in half and say one, one second. Okay, so anytime we're, anytime that flashing light is above one second, so from, from one to two seconds, and then it'll reset and it'll start back to zero, and we want that red light to come on. And what we don't want to forget is, since we already have the red light programmed as a correct output up here, we need to get rid of that, otherwise our function down here will be basically useless and that red light will still be on. So, <clears throat> we do this. See how this works. It should work. We didn't forget anything. Okay, no errors in the download. And so we already know it's working because we can see this happen, right? This is going from on to on to off. Okay, and so if we want to check our uh, check our real world outputs. You'll notice our light here is flashing from on uh, to off. Output zero is flashing from on to off. And also, since in a previous lab we tied this to a um, circle on an HMI, that is flashing from on to off as well. And so it's just a way that we have uh, to be able to to have it um, start flashing. Now. If we want to make this better, we should probably go ahead and instead of having its own rung down here, we only want the light to come on any time uh, after that after that part counter to you after that counter has seen more than five parts. So we should probably put that up here. Uh, that'll be a little bit better uh, logic. And then the other thing we want to look at is you know what can we uh, what can we do for if we were to if we want the light to be on steady for a while and then start flashing and so if we say you know conveyor is full turn the light on notify the operator and then if the operator hasn't done anything um, for our example we're just going to call it 10 seconds 
um, then again, it's going to start flashing after after that. But that can be anything that that, that you might need um, for your controls. And so, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to put in a timer on delay. Okay, so a timer. Um, we're going to have a start flashing timer. So now we say not until 10 seconds will we even have this flashing light timer uh, go on. So that part counter has got to have more than five parts in it. Box has to be full, <clears throat> and, then we, and then we start flashing. But we also want to be able to have it come on solid um, while we're waiting for that, that timer to go. Okay, so as long as that timer is off, the timer on delay, so as long as it's off, go ahead and start flashing. Thank you, so these are not our reverse block there. Then that tells us the red light will be on flashing here, but it just won't start until after this is done timing. And while this is timing, if it's not true, then this will come on. And that's all only going to happen after the part counter sees five parts. So we'll see, hopefully this works. We're not forgetting anything. Okay, downloader without errors. Okay, so we're gonna put five parts in. Solid for 10 seconds, solid on red right now, and then after 10 seconds, it starts flashing. Okay, because now we're no longer solid here, and then we start we start flashing. And if we want to see what this looks like um, on the actual device, we can. We will reset our timer, or our counter, sorry, not reset our timer, reset our counter. Five, it should come on solid for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, if it hasn't been reset, it will start. Uh, it'll start flashing. Okay, so we're going to reset it and this time within the 10 seconds. So it's solid now. <clears throat> it's on if we reset it. As long as we reset it within those 10 seconds, it won't start flashing. Okay. The logic for this program will be uh, posted under the video.